My name is Billy and welcome to Shed Tech. If I was to ask you, what has the Predator, Fallout, Futurama got in common? What would you say? That's right, they all have their own versions of a personal information processor or personal augmentation device. Now, so do I. Say hello to the Armatron. The Armatron is my own version of a pit boy. You see, about a year ago when I got myself a new 3D printer, the Prusa at Mark III, um, I tried to make a pit boy based on the designs laid out by Adafruit. Unfortunately, that pit boy was kind of, well, it looked really good. It didn't actually do anything, and I wanted something more functional. I figured in this day and age, we should probably be able to do a bit more than um, have something that just looks the part. And plus, with Russia invading Ukraine and everything, I figured it's about time to get ready for the impending nuclear war. So in my research in trying to find out how to build this bad boy, um, I did a lot of looking around on forums, on YouTube, but I came across Zach Friedman. He made his own version of a pit boy, which he called the Singularitron. That was really impressive and really inspired me to go on further to try and design my own. I really liked his display and his boards that he used, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get displays like it, so I had to kind of go back to square one and um, design my own based on the parts I kind of had laying around. Mainly, you're talking about a Raspberry Pi, an OLED display, and a few I2C sensors. So what features has the Armatron got? Well, it's got this nice magnetic base mount, which means you can easily take it off your wrist and pass it to your friends so they can have a look at it and play around with it. It's got a USB-C data port here, which isn't used yet, but I do plan to use it to make the Raspberry Pi emulate a keyboard. I want to do that so as I can uh, just have a bit of a laugh and work. Maybe rotate a few screens, open up a few Rickroll browsers on people who don't knock their computers, things like that. And it's got a USB-C charging port here, which is really handy because I haven't got any micro USB chargers left these days. They all seem to be USB-C, so it just makes life a bit easier. It's got three I2C ports that I can use for my, my devices. At the moment I have GPS device plugged in there, and there an environmental sensor, and a, a light sensor. It's got... This really nice OLED display that has nice big pixels on it. Not sure if it's translating here well in video, but it's, it's the pixels are really nice and chunky. It means that you can see the display nice and clearly from across the room. It's, it's a really nice display. So in terms of the sensors that are plugged in here, at the moment, as I mentioned, I, I can only plug in three. So at the moment, I have a GPS sensor plugged in there, an environmental sensor plugged in, and a torch. So let's go through these and see what they do. This is the environmental sensor. At the moment, you can see the temperature of the room. You can see stuff like the, the pressure, air pressure, the humidity and also gives you a, an, air per, an air quality measurement in ohms. If you want, you can actually go into another feature on this, but it takes a bit of time to run it, and it will tell you the air quality as a percentage. It takes about five minutes to run, so I'm not gonna do it here, but it's one of the features on the trip, uh, on the library itself, that I, I, I didn't write it, it just came with the chip. So it's really nice from the, from the creators of it. Next up, we have the GPS. 
At the moment, the GPS isn't logged in. It isn't locked into the satellite, so I think I'm in Ghana. Um, that's on purpose because I don't want you to uh, be tracking me down in my house or anything. <laughs> but um, as you can see, it can tell you the closest city would be Sekandi. Um, the distance to it would have been 581 kilometers. And the local population of that city is 286,000 people. So some nice information there. One of my favorite features on this is the torch on this chip here. Um, as you can see, I have four different uh, things in here. I have a torch, I would set the flash, I have a kind of a plasma feature on there that just makes crazy kind of light design on the Hypno one, which is my favorite. So let's turn on the Hypno one and have a look. Yeah, I think this is really fun. You can make nice crazy designs on there. I just turned off the Hypno one. And I'm gonna try and turn on the Plasma one there now. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, if you wanna blind people for some reason, you can turn on this flashy bad boy. <laughs> make it feel like you're in a nightclub. And if you're just in a dark room and you need a torch, you can just turn on the torch. See, nice and bright. The other sensor that I don't have plugged in here right now is this thermometer sensor and it does exactly what it says in the tin, it's an infrared thermometer. You just point it at your target, uh, push the button and it'll give you the temperature. Want to make an Armatron of your own? Go for it. I have all the files included below, including all the parts, the STLs and the code that I've used. So there's no excuses not to dust off that old Raspberry Pi you have laying around and Get out some filament and make your own. Also linked below is linked to Zach Friedman's YouTube video where he makes the single Lairtron. Uh, Zach makes some great YouTube videos. I definitely recommend you should watch and, and subscribe to him. Also, please keep an eye out for Shed Tech in the future. This is only my first video, but going forward, I'd like to make more, including the alien motion tracker, uh, my own real life Pokedex where you can use it in a zoo and things like that. If you have any suggestions, please leave a comment below and I'll be glad to take a look. Thanks for watching.